Hello and welcome. It's the 25th day of October 2018. Welcome to the Money Charts channel. And let's take a look at the NASDAQ composites amongst uh, multiple time frames going from very short term to very long term. And there's going to be a lot of different time frames, all of the ones shown, and even further as we'll get to the quarterly after the monthly. So we'll start with the five minute, go to the 15 minute, hour, three hour, 400 minute, daily, three day, weekly, monthly, and then the quarterly. And maybe even further out even after that, if need be. All trades, bets of the like within one's own risk reward. And I'm not trading any of this. Nope. Not a single share size. But if I were, I would probably need to have funds in an exchange that would allow me to do such. And I would probably need to be looking for funds of like a 2x, 3x on the NASDAQ and trade ETFs this way if I was going to be trading five minutes. But this is a market that ended the Wednesday session in a very large down move. And in fact, the market's been closed. It even says delayed. Well, it's extremely delayed now because the, the market's moving right now, just not on this composite. In many places where you have kind of accounts, you can't do anything maybe until 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm not too familiar or such. It's about 1% higher right now. So it's about 7180. It's already up a little bit. So it's into the area of where this 18 average would be. Okay, we'll see how much further more we're going to see for decline, but we're just going to uh, play out the time frame. How could you be going wanting to be going long on a situation like this other than accumulating tokens to try to uh, sell higher but 15 minute chart and this is the thing about the gap so as a trader I think amongst gaps I almost look at this like a sports bet and of course you can bet bet it like a sports game in that oh is the market going to gap higher or lower so that at the end of the day, you can bet in accordance to such. Where if you think the NASDAQ is going to gap lower, then you can buy the shorts for it, or you can sell NASDAQ shares, of course, in the hopes of buying it. So in a case here, if on October 22nd, you were going to bet that the gap would be lower, then maybe you sold X amount of shares. And then it gaps open, oh, you're right, then you buy them back at a little bit of a cheaper price, thus getting maybe a percent or two more. And then if you buy a short fund, the short fund goes up and you sell it for what would be that of a gain. Any type of buy low, sell high strategy would have meant buying on the gap open, selling a little bit here, maybe once. So what I would, what I would have probably done at this point is I'd have these buy orders in place here, so that would come in. Maybe I get a sell order here, which means I get a buy order here. And then I'd probably get a buy order here, buy order here. And I'd be looking to maybe sell, so maybe here. That's the basics of it. But again, if we're looking for any type of bullish setup, what's the current status of this time frame? And it's, it's in free fall mode. It's definitely overextended to the downside. I don't have Bollinger Bands on here, but I do realize that they're pretty much hitting them. And it's an area where I would definitely not sell because if you were looking to sell, where was the time to sell? Obviously selling as it's going up, but even on the charts in here, how many times do you see the 18 average give you indications beforehand? We can see 18 average weakness here. And then this level of support didn't do so much. And then as it's leaving the band in here. So why would you sell now when you could have sold here? That's the general in charts that I, 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 I kind of wonder. Obviously, if you know, oh my goodness, this is going on and this is happening and that, it's going to go down even further and you got a good probability. Also, then, yeah, that's a different story. But 
outside of that, hmm, it's in the down mode. I'd be thinking, okay, looking to buy here, put a sell order here. Then, of course, I'd be looking to maybe buy again at maybe 7,000 or some sort of number thereafter. Let's take a look at this on the single hour time frame. And among such, I'm going to put just a few more periods just because I want to see a bit more. Okay. So this level of support twice hit obviously fell. There was from the first time that it hit this low, the price action gapped higher and then corrected well within the 18, leaving this level of resistance for only one and only an okay leg higher. And then after settling in for a while, getting really choppy, but we can see here that after this down move, what did the 18 do? It resisted the high, fell through. And that, of course, now is declining. If you're resisting the high or the 18 again, it's going to be that of a lower high, which it was. Thus, when it got lower in here, what did the market do? It came back down to an area where it came from. It resisted where you would have expected it to. It expected where it came from again. This level of support, resisting it some more. So right off the bat, if there's going to be any rally, this 72, 78 is one of the areas in which that it came from three hour term time frame. And uh, amongst this, uh, this time frame in here, there's your down move of, of a good leg. Noticeable lower high shown in here. So another leg lower. And as far as the size of this, it's really just basically hit the basic minimum for what I'm looking for. Because if it were to just say go down to 7180 and it's only this small of a move from the line, that's not much. And we can see here breaking this level of support at 7910, how it had a decent leg lower that, yeah, it could have another uh, continuation bit further down. I know the market's gapped 100 points or 8 of 70 points rather higher up to 72, which isn't much at all, just up to here. That, uh, well, we'll take a look at further time frames as we check this out. 400 minute time frame is pretty much going to be the same as the daily, so I'm just going to divide that one. So there's the daily chart. What was a beautiful uptrend? Now, in crypto markets, generally speaking, especially because I show most of my charts crossed against either Bitcoin or Binance coin, the altcoins are going to go up a lot faster than they go down. Polar opposite than this. These markets go down a lot faster. As we can see, all of these gains wiped out really quickly on two, three, four, five good days down here. And then a couple here with this move down from the 18. But obviously, second leg lower is what this is doing. And again, we can see that as it was breaking this level of support area of around 78, the size of this leg lower was pretty decent that, again, base minimum needed for the leg to lower from this correctionary move. Let's look at this on the three-day chart. And it's back to this congestion area where it chopped up and down for a little bit as it did so uh, at the end and start, end of last year, start of this year. So what's this tell me? Well, obviously, where's the key support level for where it was? We have 68.50. We have this level at 66 that it could go, come down to. But what we're ultimately going to be seeing is a lot of empty space. Which uh, we'll see more clearly on the weekly. The market has been in a big uptrend. So just looking at this amongst the 18 average. I'm just going to put this line. I'm going to delete it. I can put a new one in if needed. From the entire start of this run, 
which is going back to September of 2016. Nothing but an uptrend. Most of the action at or above the 18 average of highs. So the deep correctionary moves occurred on February of 2018 in here as it dipped below such, but it managed to get above it and reach previous high piercing above. And then retesting this area, but again going below the 18. That was enough to make it flatten, but that's it. It didn't do anything to decline. So a flat 18 and then starts to go up again, supporting it on a few occasions. But now as it's been leaving, the 18 is starting to decline. So I'm going to be looking for this band area to be a level of resistance now on any potential rallies with, of course, reason that if this thing just wants to go down fast some more, again, a lot of this empty space in here, we can see into the 6,000s area, 5,000s full as well. Let's take a look at this on the monthly chart. And pretty much the same sort of deal. But it is now at that correctionary move according to this chart, as it's now at the 18 average of lows. But all this has been doing has been making a pattern of higher highs and higher lows consistently. Correctionary moves. Little bit in here. Then a nice uptrend. Another price correction as well. Up move. A little bit of side correction overall in here. Prices can correct either through that of price or through time. Very solid uptrend that manifested itself after such. Going from the end of 2012 and then topping in the middle of 2015. So for two and a half years with this solid trend, price action going from 3000 up to 5000 which we're going to see in most likely the next time frame, that being a key level. Okay, so here, another correctionary move through time. And it's a very solid uptrend. So it's really now just had its first correction since this move. A lackluster one here. And I say lackluster because it didn't even get below the 18 average of highs. But, but it got there. So it still was a correctionary move. It was definitely sideways when we look at it in this level here as well. So now that it's had this move, how is this 18 going to react? In that. Are we going to see a situation where this is going to be able to find bullish support like it did so here in August where the 18 average will remain rising? There could be a few uh, months where it just chops in and around there or even pierces below. So be it. Every single one of these has pierced below as far as this and this. Maybe spend a significant amount of time going sideways, which was the case here, March 2015, all the way to pretty much the end of 2016, so a year and a half of going sideways here. Could something like that come into play? Question mark. Again, there's a lot of this empty space if this is the end. 18 average flattens out because that's the first stage uh, as far as market. Uh, correction would be concerned. Stage two would be established an area of support. So come down well into the 6,000s, 6,000 lows even, for where I'd be looking for established support. Then come back to the band, break below it. I mean, there could be some decent moves thereafter. So let's next take a look at, say, the quarterly chart. And this one is still in a bull market. It's Still well above the 18 average of highs. The 18 average of lows in this one is coming in at about 57. It hasn't really had much time amongst the 18 at all. There was a brief period in January of 2016 in the first quarter, we'll state, of 216, where it went below it. And it left the 18 average in the first quarter of 2012. So it's been six years since it broke out, getting past an established level of resistance. And that established level was this high. 
as it managed to get above, the, resist it one more time, small pullback to the short term resistance in here, as we can see from this point here, and then gets above it, supports it for a few periods. And we can see here, when you look at the this time frame here, that, oh, is it going to go up? Probably, and it did. And then, of course, it comes up to this previous level of resistance, the 2,000 highs, at a little over 5,000. What? How does it work here? Oh, it just stops going up. So it was resistance. Resistance meaning the market to no longer go higher, thus go down or find a way to go sideways. And this is a pure case of nowhere near as close as going down, all sideways. And then as it breaks it, fast move. And that's where we stand right now. So we finally have a red candle down from that fast move play. Benefit of the doubt here? Well, it's overextended. It needs to pull back at some point. And if it's going to come back to where it comes from, and this is about an area where you would expect a leg higher to go from this resistance point, then 5,100 and change area, 5,000 even, we'll say. That's a differential of 2,000. That's about 30% decline from here. And you know what? So be it if something like that happens. What's previous volatility going from 5,000 down to a little over 1,000? So about almost a 5x move from the previous one. It's good to know what it's capable. A 5x move from this high in here at about close to 8,000 would be like 1,600. Well, not saying it's going to do that, and, it, and maybe it could exceed it. I'm not going to say it's going to do that either, but it could, or it could not. And one of those two will, will definitely happen. It's either going to or it's not binary. Okay, so now let's take a look at this on a yearly time frame. And I don't quite have enough data, so I'm going to finish this off within a six-month chart, rather. So a half year chart. Well, this is a story of the NASDAQ going back to 19, well, before I was born, not by much though. The low for the NASDAQ is 54.87. So it's greater than 1,000, 100 rather, 100 times higher. And from this low, it pretty much got above the 18 average here in the start of 1979. But I, consistently finding good support amongst the 18 here, again, 1982 supporting the highs, again in 1985, again in 1987. Oh, the 87 market crash. I call it the market correction. And then again in 1990. And then when it left that band in 1991, it had a very good leg higher, going from about 500 to 5,000, a 10x move. There was only one red candle. It was this one here. And, the, and that was during the sideways move. So from July 1994, or half two, or the second half of 1994, every half year had a higher gain until, of course, the end of the millennium, Y2K. And this has shown a sideways correction come into place, where support was established at around 1285, resistance established in two places, we can see as we talk about 2800 and the 51. So that's the range at which it would have to come back from. The high end of the range is 5129, the low end of the range is 2560. And there is two reasons, in my opinion, why this market has had phenomenal gains, throwing out the fact that other stocks have done well in itself, but not really. The first is because it's technology. As technology has really advanced from 1974 to large, large levels of artificial intelligence, 
It has also meant that the amount of jobs or people that are hours by humans and labor needed to do a lot of the jobs is most significantly lower than it once was. And thus, for the topic of technological unemployment, but we won't talk about that topic, as interesting as I find that topic to be. But throwing that part aside, technology has done well. But it's also priced in a fiat currency, which if you wanted to buy a chocolate bar, if you wanted to buy a vehicle, a motor vehicle, wanted to put gas in that vehicle, you wanted to go to a restaurant for lunch or dinner, you wanted to have a few drinks. What are the price of all those items then compared to now? How about that house? A modern age, middle age, top age house, or however you want to grade them back then compared to today. So, so prices obviously go higher. A technology continues to move further. Hence, one of the reasons why I'm an advocate of cryptocurrencies is I could see that as part of the next wave. But if this thing is going to have any type of serious correctionary move right now, because it's barely gotten above this 5,000 mark, I wouldn't be surprised if it comes down here. But if this uptrend continues, it would be, oh, okay, whatever. I mean, oh, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. Oh, okay. Well, well, gas in the vehicle, over $2 a liter in Canada. Mm, interesting. Those are the kinds of things I expect moving forward within the NASDAQ and, of course, our world when I reference to stuff like uh, Southern Ontario, $2 a liter Canadian gasoline prices, which it's never had. It hasn't even been close to that. But 30, 40 has been its highest prices. But when I was a kid, it was 50 cents. And a little kid, I was, it was a quarter, 10 cents. Well, maybe not 10. At least I don't remember it such. However, thank you for tuning in. And have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.